Paul, I understand you got to do something pretty interesting over Thanksgiving, despite the circumstances. I did. A uh, little, little bit of buzz going around North Dakota, but also nationally. Yeah. Um, so I got to watch a very special production, which we will get into. It's, uh, it's near and dear to a lot of people's hearts, uh, particularly locally, but, but not to mention nationally. Mm-hmm. And we ended up, without you knowing, over the weekend, we ended up booking a person for this episode mm-hmm. who is responsible for all that buzz. And he's with us today. Yes, we did. Matt Fern. Matt is his Fern. name. Matt, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Paul and John. I, I appreciate the opportunity to be on your podcast. Well, before we get started, Matt, I just I need to know, I need to go deep. What are your thoughts on Little Caesars? <laughs> Coming in hot. Yeah. Um I'm ready. I mean, uh, can you get a better value? Oh, no, oh baby. no, no. I don't think so. I don't think you can. I'm a fan. And actually, I'm pretty sure that uh, we, while filming this movie, we did swing through a couple Little Caesar drive throughs oh, I remember, because we're doing a lot of traveling. Uh, just swing in, get, get that $5 pizza, and, and get back on the road filming. Absolutely. The podcast can go on. Oh, wow. my goodness. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so just, just knowing that your moral credentials qualify you for this podcast now, um, I, would like to hear, I would like to hear you tell us about yourself just up until the point you, you knew you wanted to start this project. I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to know the name of the production yet. I don't want any clues. We just want to know about Matt Fern. Yeah, um, born and raised in Bismarck, North Dakota. I've been very interested in making videos since I was as young as I can remember. And uh, I went to film school in Bozeman, Montana. Uh, out of film school, I, I got a job uh, working at an ad agency, um, and then uh, about, geez, nine years ago, started my own video production company in Bismarck, and for the last 10-some years, I've been producing uh, commercials, podcasts, vlogs, um, micro-documentaries, and a whole bunch of stuff all across North Dakota. Very cool. What's a micro-documentary? It's a sh- it's a fancy way of saying a short documentary, <laughs> um, but usually you know you, we package it you know with multiple many of them. Like I did this um, series called Daily Decoding, um, where I did forty of these little mini micro documentaries that are all about three four minutes. Oh wow wow interesting! Did you make one every single day? Uh, for uh, for about two years there, I, I spent a lot of time working on it. They were pretty heavy production intensive, but we released them daily. That's why we call it daily decoding. Um, we would have like a season, and every day we'd release a new film. But um, looking back, that was a bad way to burn through a lot of good content to release five <laughs> five in a week. <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow. Well, you you clearly honed a craft with all of that all of that. Uh, Repetition. Well, I shouldn't say repetition, but um, quantity experience. Yeah, I learned a heck of a lot, um, and I applied it to my new film here, and um, and yeah, <laughs> hopefully it shows. What was what was the moment where? Let, let's get into it now. What what was the moment? What was the day? Or what was the the timeline where it's like, I got to do this thing. I got to make this movie. Oh man, I had, uh, it was about eight years ago after I did that Daily Decoding series I just mentioned, I wanted to tell a bigger story, um, didn't have a lot of funds, so I knew it needed to be a documentary and I needed it needed to take place in North Dakota. And I have had a lot of experience filming on um, reservations across North Dakota. And I felt like um, there really hasn't been much representation and there really hasn't been many t- stories told on North Dakota reservations. Um, 
And so all of that kind of combined when the Fighting Sioux name and logo were all over the news. Um, and so this is right when the NCAA was involved and there's a statewide vote. And I never had been to a game, never really watched a full game of UND hockey, um, had just been aware of, I knew that was University of North Dakota's name and logo, and there's some controversy behind it. And so I thought, you know, there's something there um, to, to be able to explore and a larger story to tell, and ultimately a, a chance to tell some stories on the North Dakota reservations and the relationship between Native and non-Native communities, which ultimately I think this, this film is about. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I got to watch it on Saturday. John was doing something else. And um, yeah, it's, you interviewed so many damn people. It's incredible. I just can't even imagine, uh, you know, the driving and, and the, the editing and, and trying to piece everything together. Um, the, I, I thought it was very, I thought it was weighted very equally. I don't think you can really tell, like, I think you just really let people make their own decision, particularly because um, I, don't, I don't think there was one ounce of narration, was there? No, there's none. Um, it's all told through editing. And I did that intentionally just to try to remove myself from the narrative as much as possible and allow um, the people interviewed to, they all look directly into the lens of the camera. And so I wanted them to all be the narrator. And I like the idea of switching the narrator. You know, you can have two different people tell the same story. And so that's what I tried doing. So it, it was very difficult, but um, yeah, most people don't even realize there's no voiceover in there. Yeah, exactly. That's that's exactly the point. I, I I couldn't remember if there was voiceover or or narration because it's just it was so fluid and like I don't know how many people in North. I think John and I are the only people in North Dakota that you didn't interview. It feels like. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. And there's there's probably over twenty interviews that didn't fit into the movie. Are you kidding? No way. Oh, my that gosh. had some really good stuff, um, but just didn't fit in, you know, and this movie could have gone in so many different directions. And so um, it, it, it was difficult to try to tell a narrative and hopefully there is a narrative. And, and so I had to cut some interviews um, just so there's less amount of people coming at you. And also, so it's a little easier to follow. Sure. Wow. Who, who is your, who is your favorite that you had to just like do away with? Um, there was a lot of, I interviewed like the the editor of the Dakota student at UND at the time. Um, and so he was he was good, but it just it just didn't kind of fit in. It, it kind of felt repetition to everything else. And and the student, the younger generation, when I was filming it, they had all, you know, especially the people I talked to were ready to move on past the logo. And so um, to get that balance between um you know, people trying to keep it and treat people trying to retire it. Um, that ultimately didn't make the, the, the film, but also not only were there people I interviewed that didn't make it, there's a lot of great stories from the people in the film that I couldn't fit in there. Um, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I get this movie's going to have a big DVD bonus section. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good to know. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so, so you, you've done a lot of, um, documentary work before um i feel like if someone was just doing their first one they wouldn't have been able to finish the film which is always the goal right that just because of the thousand different directions that they could have taken their interviews um how did you did you go in with a clear objective and you kind of knew what you were looking for in each interview or or did your questions change the more you met people yeah, great question. Um, I definitely, I had a, a very specific set of questions for the people I interviewed, but it was always very um, um, 
kind of logistics of just like what happened, then what happened. Um, like I said, I really didn't know much about this going in. And I felt like that was really beneficial to me um, because I was able to kind of see the movie unfold as as the audience. Um, but then I, w- I would ad- adjust the questions as, as the interview would go on. Um, but there was a lot of people I wish I could have gone back on, you know, especially all the fans, um, you know, that there was a new logo and it was eventually retired. A lot of the interviews were done before all that happened. So I would have loved to got their, their thoughts on that. Um, and it, in terms of just the scope of, of, um, of editing it, um, definitely all my commercial work and doing that daily decoding work helped me of just telling a story beginning, middle and end, and just getting that repetition down. But doing a feature film, is everything times a hundred, um, your music, your graphics, your sound. But then also what's really interesting, especially not having a a narrator is just the balancing of scenes. I had so many awesome scenes that like were great on their own, but in correlation to the scene before it or the scene after it or scenes, you know, two scenes down, um, it wouldn't work and, and it would stop the movie dead in its tracks. So, um, I had the kind of cool fortune of, you know, I did a Kickstarter for this to help get some funds to finish it and ultimately use those funds to release it myself. Um, but I was able to show the film a couple times to audiences throughout these seven years. And that was extremely beneficial because I had like questionnaires of like, what did you like? What didn't you like? And also I, I recorded the audience too. Cause I could find out like, all right, they're just checking their phone here. Um, and so that helped a lot, um, to be able to have kind of chances to, to get real time feedback. And I just did the film. I even finished the latest version of the film five minutes before it went live. Um, so <laughs> it's constantly, Amazing in flux wow amazing <laughs> um paul and i well me in particular grew up diehard fighting sioux football fans in particular um our dad actually played for them back in like the 1910s <laughs> um wow <laughs> and so i would i guess i would have expected you to come on and say that you were kind of in the same boat you were a long time fighting sioux fan and you wanted to get this um, all recorded. But I think it's a lot more interesting that you can, you come from a like quite unbiased perspective. So I'm wondering, there's probably a lot of people that have the, the same perspective as you. Why did you feel the need that, besides that you have done documentaries in the past and clearly have the skills to complete something like this, but why did you feel it was on you to make something as big as this. I felt like there still are to this day, a lot of issues between native and non-native communities in North Dakota. And I think um, the best way to, to start healing and the best way to start moving forward and um, to, to working together in a more productive way is communication. And so, uh, you know, I really believe this film can have start some conversations and and hopefully open up people's um awareness and understanding on both sides of of the issue um and the issue being you know the use of native american um imagery um in other in other mediums outside of their culture well matt i i learned more about um the tribes and the controversy than i ever did reading the paper uh, throughout all this. Um, it just goes to show like how much work probably has to be done to get the full, mm-hmm. the full scope on both sides. Uh, yeah, I just learned so much, and um, it didn't feel like an hour and a half. It felt, I don't know, it, al- it almost felt like two days for all the information that was packed in there, I guess, is how I felt. But... John, you definitely have to watch it. And uh, and Matt, why don't you tell John where he can find it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can see it in movie theaters across North Dakota, uh, or you can watch it on demand through Vimeo.com. And Vimeo is 100% free, and it allows you to put it on your computer, mobile device, or TV. And all of that is available at FightingOverSue.com. Awesome. Amazing. Awesome. Amazing. Well, Matt, thank you... Uh Thank you for coming on the podcast, but also for making this this work of art. I'm extremely excited to watch, and uh, 
and I think a lot of other people are too. So thank you for all of your information. And good luck with the continued distribution. I'm sure that's just getting going now. Yeah. Yeah, well, thank you guys. Appreciate the opportunity and uh, love watching news game. So uh, <laughs> can't wait to see the next one. 